My name is Dr. Marshall Shepard. I am a professor of geography and atmospheric sciences at the University of Georgia. This is taken from the Animal Frontiers article. At the, at the beginning of the article, there is a section where I tried to give implications, uh, some of the key implications for the animal sciences and livestock community. And I've highlighted those in, in the orange boxes. Uh, again, in terms of livestock, li uh, globally, livestock is a, a very large methane source emitter. Uh, you see the numbers for the United States, and this is based on some literature that I find. Sometimes these things vary depending on what literature you cite. Uh, atmospheric methane is increasing, can linger in the atmosphere for 9 to 15 years, and, and it is more than 20 times more effective at trapping heat than carbon dioxide. Again, this is a very important point because I know that methane is a very key player in the livestock and animal sciences community. The bad news is that real, methane is a great absorber, as a great uh, serves a great function as a greenhouse gas. It's good at that, at what it does. The good news is there's not nearly as much methane in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, but we are certainly concerned about the fact that methane trends are are are, are going in the, I guess, wrong direction in terms of. Uh, from a standpoint of climate change. Additionally, carbon losses associated with grazing systems could be reduced through proactive management to conserve vegetation cover, soil carbon storage, and integration of climate fluctuations and livestock production. So people are thinking about uh, how to sort of mitigate and adapt to some of these changing climate and or emission scenarios. And if you look down to the bottom, one of the things that often is often talked about is how livestock and animal sciences contributes to climate change and global warming through the emissions of methane, for example. But climate change will also affect livestock productions and practices. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And methane is very important as a greenhouse gas and is an, and plays a key role in animal livestock. So here's a table of U.S. methane emissions by source. Uh, I pulled this from the EPA. And this is just a look at the trends in methane sources emissions over the last, oh, 20 to 30 years or so. And for things like enteric fermentation or manure management, uh, for example, manure management, 1990, uh, you can see a value in the equivalent of 31.7. That seems to trend upward up through about 2007 and levels off some in 2008 and 2009. Uh, there are certainly other uh, activities on this list related to animal and livestock activities where you can see trend trending upward. And what will some of the impacts of climate change be on livestock production? Reynolds et al. in 2010, uh, 2010 talked about some of this. They talk about some of the implications such as impacts on forage yields, feedstuff quality, availability and cost, water vape availability, thermal stress. Uh, it, it related welfare issues and even disease spread. And more specifically, they mentioned that climate change in climate would affect the suitability of land, the availability of land due to sea level rise, water availability and quality, and production efficiencies under drought conditions. So this is what one of those areas where I talk about how climate change itself will affect livestock production. It's not just simply livestock production affecting climate. So this leads me to sort of drawing to a close. Well, what are some of the things that we do? Well, some of the things that you hear talked about or discussed are lumped into different categories. For example, mitigation is the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, things like cap and trade or carbon taxes, or everyone going out and buying a Prius or, 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 or biking to work. These are mitigation strategies, trying to actually reduce the amount of greenhouse gases. Uh, because of the sort of political climate, I, I think things like cap and trade bills and things of that nature are, are somewhat dead on arrival right now. So I'm starting to see both the administration and stakeholders talk a lot more about adaptation strategies. Adaptation is alteration of activities to minimize the consequences of climate change. For example, building seawalls near New Orleans or uh, adding um, air conditioning to public housing units in large cities in the northern tier like Philadelphia, Chicago, etc. Or, or uh, using drought resistant seeds in the southeast. Those are adaptation strategies. Um, here are some really nice resources uh, from both NASA and NOAA. Uh, the climate portal at uh, climate.gov is a really good resource on climate. It has a lot of nice sort of really um, accessible climate uh, science information, 